I expected Adobe's new Premiere update to be trash. But I judged too fast. After installing it, I was shocked. Version 25 brings some wild changes I didn't see coming. And trust me, the last one in this video is mind-blowing. First up, let's talk about some bugs that have finally been fixed. In previous versions, creating a smooth scale animation with the motion blur enabled was a nightmare thanks to a bug that made your animation flicker. I found a workaround, but luckily that's no longer needed. Same thing for zooming in in the timeline. Since version 24.3, it's been tricky to zoom in on a specific clip or points. It kinda jumped around like this, but thankfully that's now been fixed too. By the way, I actually have a contact at Adobe who I occasionally talk to about these bugs and he's definitely watching this video. So if there's something bugging you about Premiere, let him know down below. All right, so things are looking better for Premiere, but wait until you hear about the essential graphics panel. It's gone. But don't panic just yet, because what they gave us instead is actually way better and more reliable. So now we got two panels. The first is the Graphics Templates panel, where you can browse and install your templates. That's it. Simple and clean, which I love. The second is the Properties panel, where you can customize your templates and basically do everything you used to do in the Essential Graphics panel. You can also customize your graphics layers like text right here. Kind of like the Properties panel in After Effects. Of course, you can adjust your video clips in this panel too, with a built-in transform and crop effect. Super useful. The effect controls got a major update as well. The motion properties now include a crop effect by default, so you no longer have to dig through the effects library to find it every time. Now, here's something even better. In the program monitor, you can now access the transform properties directly. This is insanely useful. It makes customizing your clips so much easier, and I absolutely love it. Man, I can't wait to show you the last one, but first I need to show you something I don't want you to miss out on. For just $14.99, you can get access to the fastest growing music and sound effects library for creators. Audio remembers what kind of music I like for my videos, which means I can create playlists with music I actually want to use. It works like this. Their AI tool will recognize my taste of music and it will find similar songs. No need to browse for hours anymore. Thank you Audio so much for sponsoring this video. Also, if you find a song you like, just click the lightning bolt and Audio will find you a huge list of similar songs. They even have an AI tool called LinkMatch, where you can paste a link to YouTube or Spotify and LinkMatch will then give you similar songs you can use copyright free without any issues. On top of that, you'll get thousands of high quality cinematic sound effects. I honestly can't imagine going back to bad stock music. Check out the link down below. Alright, now let's talk about teams. You've probably noticed that Premiere Pro 25 looks a bit different. Let me know what you think, by the way. I do think everything looks a little bit simpler. However, I think it looks better on a Mac, but that has always been the case. Now, here's the real update. You can now change Premiere's team in the Appearance tab. You can say goodbye to the beautiful brightness slider and say hello to the three new options. The darkest, dark and light team. On Mac, all of them look beautiful. On PC, I prefer the old version of Premiere. But hey, it's all about personal taste. Corner pin is finally GPU accelerated, officially. Man, I'm really happy about it. Look at how smooth it actually works. Okay, so this is the big one we've all been waiting for, the final update. It's still in beta, but oh my god, it works so freaking well. Generative Extent, it's a tool you will find in the toolbar. Let's say you've reached the end of your clip, but you need it to be longer. Normally, you'd have to slow it down, but that will reduce the frame rate, which in turn will make it choppy. But with Generative Extent, you can simply drag the clip further in time and Adobe Firefly will artificially extend it. The best part, the difference is almost invisible. If you use it subtly, you won't even notice. I'm genuinely impressed that Adobe is not only fixing long-standing bugs, finally, but also pushing the boundaries with AI features like this. Thank you so much, Adobe. Okay, to really grasp Generative Fill, the best way is to try it out in Photoshop and you will everything learn about that in the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.